Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay. Very, so, <laughs> very happy to see you. This is session uh, 3BA uh, of uh, GSD UK 2021. Um, this session will be presented uh, by Peter Cole um, and it's enhanced scheduling with IZWS. Um, as normal, uh, a reminder about your feedback forms at the end and to donate generously uh, for the charities in appreciation of the work that Peter and many other presenters have uh, uh, done in order to make this uh, a successful um, conference. So uh, at this point, I will give over to Peter. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, yeah, welcome again uh, after the lunch break. Um, I'm currently not only looking at my presentation, I'm also looking at who is, who is attendant in this session. And I see Andy and Jens, which are two of my colleagues, and I got Anna and Hans. Um, Hans, welcome. Uh, Anna shortly uh, introduced you already when she saw you in the waiting room. Um, so because the uh, presentation that you're going to see is being recorded, uh, I will not... Go skip over any details, although I might know um, that you guys don't really focus on this particular area. But I'm still going to try to make it as interesting as possible for particular Anna and Hans coming from the IBM working on what is now called IZWS. Um, I was introduced to that uh, naming just a few minutes ago by my colleague Jens. Jens, my friend, thank you so much for this. Anna already confirmed this is the terminology that we go with. Um, today, other than the, the raffle, as the, the, the um, title already suggests, we're talking about enhanced scheduling with, apologies, did not change it here, uh, IZWS. The thing is now, because you guys come from the IBM, I want to emphasize that this particular solution that you're about to see only works with your tool. So nothing in this is actually to, you know, replace or whatsoever. It's in really enhanced scheduling based entirely on your scheduling tool. So I hope by going through those particular problems, you guys see how this could benefit maybe even customers of yours, maybe even drives ideas of yours, um, or just helps you to see there are companies out there that understand what you guys are doing and really work on emphasizing and keeping this um, modern and making it easier for the customers. So speaking about customers, um, all of us usually at the GSE uh, we really enjoy the talk about what is going on. Do you face issues like this? Do you face, um, did you see this and this update coming through? That really make my life easier. So because I don't really have the chance to chat to all of you in the, in the main room, um, I just took a few points that were given to us from a customer, but also from other conversations that we had. And it was about the problems, um, modern scheduled environments phase. And some of this could have been, um, they need to deploy hundreds of mid-range servers, or they need to simplify the general usage of the daily plan, or of, um, you, you may even heard it in the session with Ian yesterday with Next, that they were facing issues at the development and Windows servers, and they all had to bring if ideas centrally that are realized on the mainframe. But in order to do so, um, they couldn't really teach all of the new colleagues involved in such projects with the in-depth um, topics of IWS or IZWS. Um, so they had the same staff, but more work to do so. Um, and back in the days, it always just been the Z. Now we have Unix, AIX, we have Z Linux, we have cloud, we have containers, so much more platforms that we believe, and I know the IBM as well, should be somehow connected to the mainframe because the mainframe still offers so much more than just pure power and stability. Um, again, 
couple of points that we face that are more technical and dependent to the, the scheduler themselves. Um, we have re re uh, jobs that need to be repeated quite often in a very, very short period of time. Um, we have different return code behavior. So what happened if the return code is four is, should there be an automated task following up or should that be something that is even without any task following up? Because we know this had to happen in order for it to work. Runtime in general is something that we all see a high need of visualization in general, right? Um, we need to know what is going on and we need to react to it pretty fast. Special resources play a role in this as well. And of course, due to changes within the business model, um, also something that we heard with Next yesterday is that Back in the days, we only had requests coming in from, I don't know, nine to five. But due to the business model being expanded worldwide, tickets or requests or changes or updates have to be done at any time. They are not limited to the work hours of the individual country where the data center is located. So all of those things led to a high demand on changes on the scheduling system on a host. And especially during the last couple of years, I have to say, when we all got hit by a situation that we couldn't really foresee at all, um, we had to make it available in places that we didn't think of before. I'm not only talking about the cloud as the place of installation or the place where the data is, but I'm also talking about um, containers being able to, be, to, to have the software ready for usage that, that comes overnight. Right. Next said that they have special sales programs where they need to uh, uh, raise their capabilities. Or we have other customers that have um, instances where they know due to their business, the usage is going to be very high or we might change the usage um, due to the business being uh, deployed to a different entity or whatsoever. And to show what it really means for, from a customer side as a non-technical perspective, we picked out something um, that you all already probably realized who we are speaking about. It's a very uh, large car manufacturer here located in Germany, and it has a worldwide car parts distribution system centrally set up in their home country and home uh, city. So they have a huge warehouse, and I'm not only talking about data warehouse, I'm actually talking about spare parts in different entities, but they're all being assembled in one place. And to assemble those cars in the end, the, the orders are try to be just in time, meaning that whenever you as an end customer go to whatever carbrand.com it is, and you uh, customize your wish of car, by saying, I want this color, I want those kind of mirrors, I want this kind of tires. This is just in time processed, handed over to the, inter to the individual spare parts, and then mod brought together and loaded into trucks. Because other than data, we actually really have to um, put parts in trucks and move them from A to B, rather than just sending it through cable. And it sums up to 200 trucks a day. So all of those trucks have parts in that are ordered just in time due to the end customer's wishes and then yeah, placed uh, and then put together um, in, a, in a factory. So they had a huge demand on batch jobs and not speaking Z jobs, speaking decentralized work, um, jobs because they had have huge um, system or SAP system set up. Um, they have business warehouses from SAP and they have different um, other data warehouses checking the availability of parts in the background. This is the use case. The faster the parts are checked and being controlled, which part came in, which part is available, the faster they can actually really load the trucks. And time means money in every business. So all of those parts have to be brought together into the factory and in order to do so, we needed 
to help them be able to check those parts and the availability of those parts really, really fast. So they had the situation that they have this growing decentralized world, but they wanted to control it from the, from the mainframe because the mainframe is still their go-to platform when it comes to all of those uh, high transaction amounts. But of course, as anyone else, they also needed to reduce the costs and they had to really overview what is going on. So they need high availability. As I said, they need to keep the mainframe controlled scheduling in place. They didn't want to lose the, the power of what they do because they are uh, a centrally organized organization and they are um, distributing software and all of those things centrally into the uh, decentralized metric. They don't have a second environment installed, meaning we, we know that you guys also have installation where you have a uh, IZWS running and a distributed scheduling workload tool as well. This is not the, the case for our customer here. And you know this is something that we really like to be honest because uh, our products work very well with that particular tool. And the, the demand for such scheduling of course, did not just end by, I want to schedule it. I also want all of the benefits that I know from modern scheduling, but on mid-range servers. So we created tools that were able to connect to different servers. And we, have, we based the development on, uh, on uh, research. So the agents themselves do not need to be specialized on the platform itself. So you get one agent for every platform. So you keep the flexibility of adding windows or, an, or a uh, Unix or whatever server you want to add. Um, this may also makes it more easy to maintain all of those agents, right? Um, the products, you guys, I know you uh, have been familiar with beta systems for a while. They used to be called beta 92 and EGM. We are now in a phase with our current generation of products that we give them names that actually tell you what they do. And because of this, we have beta log Z, meaning it is log management on the Z platform. And we have beta job Z, meaning that we um, control jobs from the Z, but towards the Unix systems world. And the goal of it all, and what it really brought to the customer is that in the end, due to the efficiency of truck loading, they really save money in the end. And this is really what brought the, the positive outcome um, to the business themselves really fast. Now, back from all those, this marketing talk towards what does it mean in a technical detail? It all began when they had just one mainframe, no sysplex, and we had to schedule a bit of this. They had beta 92 and just collecting the logs. But then there was a sysplex coming to it. And then from those sysplexes on, they wanted to schedule decentralized servers. And they wanted to have it monitored. And of course, with automatic failover, reloading, and dynamic workload balancing. So if you have several SAP systems and one runs full, our agents then shift the workload to the individual other server that the client had in their infrastructure. So again, lots of flexibility, lots of automation as well. And then on the other side, not only because the slide was full to the right, but also because it is sometimes a different silo of people, we also had to connect other systems to the central um, mainframe infrastructure because they wanted to have direct access to it. They wanted to see what is going on. Other than for the, for the right part where the scheduling is automatically done and that just the re return data is being handled by someone, the left side really wanted to be able to see what is going on because it's inventory. They, want, they needed to know, is this part already being checked and processed so I can start my ordering process or the follow-up tasks. And because it is such a time critical task to know which parts are in your inventory, they had the demand of doing it in a high frequency, meaning every five, every 10, every 30 seconds. 
one of those features that really help bringing this as a solid business case to success. So as a summary, the main critical part was a shorter interval. Due to the beta job Z installation, you can now run those decentralized jobs within a five second window, within a 10 second window. You have dedicated um, uh, settings, how often you want to run those, what is going to happen with the return code, and especially um, the difference between the handling. So different return codes have different follow-up actions. Also, just to go through those as a, as a general uh, package of benefits, it's the, the, the ability to control it from the mainframe, having all the flexibility from the decentralized world. It's fault tolerant, as I said, and something that is very charming. Um, I don't want to say our development didn't really think of it in this way, but we have customers using this setup entirely for file transfer, because the file transfer for us can be done from agent to agent, can be done from mainframe to agent, or from agent to mainframe back to the agent, but also without talking to the mainframe. And for us, being the log management company, file transfer was never the focus, but we knew it is something that needs to be included in there. So whenever you have an agent or two agents running, you can actually do file transfer for free, depend the size, because for us, it's just a job. We don't really look at the size of it. So file transfer within this combination of product might be something that you guys also could uh, trigger at your customer's installation. If you see that currently file transfer costs a lot of money, right? With the agents from beta systems, you can do that as well, triggered from the mainframe. Um, all the integration um, is done and tested and certified. So this is something that um, we don't really need to focus on. You know beta systems, we wouldn't be bringing out anything like this if it's not tested. Um, and just as a, as a closing for this particular summary, the, the integration with our log management kind of completes the whole picture of once the job is run, you get a central um, information repository. And what that means in visualization points, this is something I'm happy to share with you within the following slides. So customer was able to enhance IZWS with the job Z to keep up with new requirements. This is something that needs emphasis, emphasis because whenever there are new requirements, we, we realize, and I know you know, and you, I know you had this conversation as well. You, you always hear most of the times, ah, it's probably not going to work on the mainframe. It, yes, it will once you give it a thought. There are so many specialists having done so many different things on that machine that so far we, can, we could always find a solution that really serves um, the customer demands. It allowed faster logistic processes truck loading and part distribution was accelerated. And in the end, we really saved them money because it's, it's quite simple. The, if you cannot uh, uh, bring the parts to the factory, factory can't build cars. If you can't build the cars, you can't sell them. So having this all done faster, you could actually see that um, this combination not only gives them savings in terms of real money from the business side, but it also boosted the IZWS installation for that customer. Because you, I'm sure you can imagine whenever you have those kind of requirements handed over to a team, it comes from the business, money always is an issue, and there are always other forces that drive the idea, oh, this is not something that we want to do on the mainframe. Ah, uh, this means such a high investment on an already overpriced machine. But it's not. If you really focus on what the machine can do and put workload on it, you are still able to do all of this with the same amount of MIP for the same pricing that you get from your individual vendors, but you have just one more workload on it. And um, the, the stability that you get from that system is still something missing in the open world. So it totally works, but we always have the same problems. How do we do all this crazy new stuff? How do we do cloud and container? Can we do it? And in short, um, I don't think I need to explain this audience in particular that IWSC is 
totally ready to be cloud uh, addressing. Um, I don't probably also don't need to explain that to the audience that may look at the recording, but in general, we know the, the cloud has to be addressed and it can be done from the mainframe. In different ways, of course, we have different ideas of what, what we do. And we also need to somehow focus on certain ways of doing it what, because there is still a movement with lots of ideas, but the general overall idea is totally addressable by, by us and also by, um, by Horizon, for example, we have just done a, um, a uh, what is it, POC in the cloud, something that was not thinkable a few years ago. Also something driven through COVID, driven through the situation that we are stuck at home. Um, there is innovation out there. What it means for our products, it's the same product, it's the same setup with the same benefit. It just runs in a different environment. So we can address now demilitarized zones. And we can also address cloud in terms of agentless, meaning that back in the days, you always had to have all those server informations in order to run an agent on it. Due to the modern architecture of those agents, you don't need all of those details in front anymore. So this is how you then address a cloud server with the respective functionality from the host. Same goes for Red Hat OpenShift container. Um, we now are able to ship out software in a pre-designed container. Um, customers are using it already as is, as a container version when they implement our products in different, um, in different installations. And we also heard throughout the last sessions, again, something that is repetitive. We need to be able to address those container and cloud functionality because the mainframe cannot uh, coexist um, as an individual without being connected to all of those platforms. And lastly, to bring, all, to bring the enhancement of an IWSZ through our ways of thinking to, to a closed package that you guys really have benefits from, you need to um, be able to see and know what is going on with those servers, with those jobs, um, with those return codes. So how should you be able to have access to all of this? Well, there is only one way, it's through a web-based GUI. And what, what that means is you have all your mainframe APARs and job Zs running on it. You have all the open systems in the back and on the left, you have the departments so, and the own applications. And in the middle, and it really is in the middle of it all, uh, we have designed a web GUI, giving you direct access to not only upgrade and maintain the, the agents themselves, also roll out agents, but also have the individual data accessible through that. And of course, as you know from beta systems, in the back, it's all the security settings that you know from your RugF, that you know from your LDAP, or whatever department and security regulations you have involved. So the combination of all of those gives you the oversight of what is going on. It gives you a control center. It also gives you ease of use. One of those things that we see, and I talked about it in the beginning, is scale shortages. We have the same demand or in higher demand. And in best case, we have the same staff doing it. Most of the time we have younger staff and different staff doing it. So we need those guys to do the same job that a very experienced guy has been doing for the last 30 years. And most of the times they get handed the job without any documentation. So having modern web GUIs to do those very, indicative mainframe job scheduling is something very helpful and brings a lot of benefit to the individual customer very fast uh, because web front ends are always easier to use than you know ISPF 3270 for the newer generation, right? And in the end, it gives you automation. Something that we all know is what will keep the mainframe running, uh, what will keep the mainframe profitable, and efficient. It's automation. We have Jens from Horizon in, in an earlier session speaking about automization of handover processes. We have us speaking about automation of what happens to the recurrent code, what happens with decentralized servers. You have other people talking about automization within um, application writing and coding. This is something that drives and 
with web GUIs like the beta control, you get all of this. So to, to be honest, um, it's modern open system scheduling and data transfer, as I described, from the mainframe out there for everyone that uses um, IZWS. And again, just for us and the audience, uh, if you contact through this GSE and you say, hey, I heard, I heard that presentation, we are happy to throw in a few goodies as well. That much for the sales part. So when I talk about beta systems, I also took the liberty of including Horizon here. Um, this is basically the team in the UK that could answer all of the questions that you might have in addition to the session or when you listen to the recording. Um, we are really, really happy to hear from you. And other than this, are there any additional questions from this audience that we have today? I am checking the screen and I can't see anything. So there are no questions, no. Okay, well, I guess to be honest, because it's um, an enhan enhanced, if you guys saw any uh, particularly interesting thing, I'm super happy to talk about it in depth. For all the others, um, keep your IWS or IZWS installation running, give it lots of workload. And whenever you have the feeling you want to do something outside of Z, think of beta systems and um, you all should get a proper solution. Thank you so much. Regards from Berlin. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, I can unmute you. If you're uh, if you're too shy, shy to write or too shy to talk, <laughs> you have uh, you have both of the uh, opportunities. You can now uh, unmute yourself. Um, if there, if there are no questions or no comments or no conversation, then um, just to remind you to uh, put your hands in your pockets or click on the uh, uh, Virgin Giving and uh, provide some uh, well-deserved uh, <coughs> funding for uh, two very worthy charities. Um, and uh, please don't forget to do your session feedback. Uh, and just to remind you, one of the questions on the uh, feedback form is about the length of the presentation. Uh, five is the correct answer <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, please read the questions properly before uh, <laughs> providing your feedback value. Um, and um, uh, yep, uh, session 3BA. No, yes. 3BA. <laughs> exactly. It, that's what I it like is. To them all the time. Um, <laughs> so uh, do um, do give your feedback, and uh, I wish you all a happy GSE. Totally. Likewise, hoping to see you in live and real person next year. We are planning to do it that way, um, but of course. Nice. That uh, <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah. We were planning to do that this one that way as well. So I'd be uh, happy to join yeah. to, totally. <laughs> all right, and thank you so much, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference. Okay, thank you all. Bye bye.